Cantos twenty eight to thirty of Book four of the Ramayam of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O One Two Three. Canto twenty eight The Rains. See, brother, see, does Rama cried on my lover's dark wooded side. A chain of clouds, like lofty hills, The sky with gathering shadow feels. Nine months those clouds have borne the load, Conceived from sunbeams as they glowed, And, having drunk the seas, gave birth, And dropped their offspring on the earth. Easy it seems at such a time That flight of cloudy stairs to climb, and from their summit safely won hang flowery reeds about the sun see how the flash of evening's red fringes the fleshy clouds overhead till all the sky is tricked and lined with bleeding wounds in canodined all the white firmament above shows like a lover sick with love and pale with cloudlets heaves a sigh, And the soft breeze that wanders by. See, by the fervent heat embrowned, How drowns to cherishing sours the ground, Pours out in floods her gushing tears, Like cedar wild with torturing fears. So softly blows this cloud-born breeze, Cool through the boughs of camphor trees, that one might hold it in the cup of hollowed hands and drink it up. See, brother, where that rock is steep, where odorous shrubs in raindrops weep, shows like Sugriva when they shed their royal balm upon his head. Like students at their task appear, these hills whose misty peaks are near, black deerskin garments wrought of cloud, their forms with fitting mantles shroud. Each torrent from the summit poured supplies the place of sacred cord, and winds that in their caverns moan sound like the voices undertone. From east to east red lightnings flash, and quivering knit the golden lash, the great sky like a generous steed groans inly at each call to speed yon lightning as it flashes through the giant cloud of sable hue recalls my votorous sita pressed mid struggles to the demon's breast see on those mountain ridges tanned sweet shrubs that bud and bloom expand the soft rain ends their pangs of grief and drops its pulse on flower and leaf. But all their ruptures stab me true, And wake my pining love anew. Now through the air no wild bird flies, Each lily shuts her weary eyes, And blooms of opening jasmine show, The parting sun has ceased to glow. No captain now for conquest burns, but homeward with his host returns. For roads and kings' ambitious dreams Have vanished neat descending streams. This is the watery month wherein The summer's sacred chants begin. A shudder passed, now Koshal's lord The harvest of the spring has told, And dwells within his palace freed from every care of pressing need. Full is the moon, and fierce and strong, Impetuous Sergio roars along. As though Aotheas crowds ran out, To greet their king with echoing shout. In this sweet time of ease and rest, No care disturbs the griever's breast. The foe that marred his peace overthrown, and queen and realm once more his own. Alas, a harder fate is mine, reft both of realm and queen to pine. Unlike the bank which floods a road, 
I sink beneath my sorrow's load. Sore my soul, my miseries weigh, And these long reigns our actions stay. While Robin seems a mightier foe, Then I dare hope to overthrow. I saw the roads were barred by rain, I knew the hopes of war were vain, Nor could I bid so grieve arise, Though prompt to aid my enterprise. Even now I scarce can arch my friend, On whom his house and realm depend, Who, after toil and peril past, Is happy with his queen at last. Sagriva so after rest will know, The hour is come to strike the blow, Nor will his grateful soul forget My succour or deny the debt. I know his generous heart and helms, Await the time with confidence, When he his friendly chill will show, And brooks again untroubled flow. Canto twenty nine Hanuman's Council No flash of lightning lit the sky, No cloudlet marred the blue on high, The Saras missed the welcome rain, The moon's full beams were bright again. Sugriva, lapped in bliss, forgot the claims of fate, or he did not, and by alluring joys misled, the path of falsehood longed to tread. In careless ease he passed each hour, and dallied in his lady's bower. Each longing of his heart was stilled, and every lofty hope fulfilled. Wait royal rumour by his side. Otara, yet a dearer bride. He spent each joyous day and night in revelry and wild delight, like Indra, whom the nymphs entice to taste the joys of paradise. The power to courtiers' hands resigned, to all their acts his eyes were blind. All doubt, all fear he cast aside, and lived with pleasures for his guide. But sage Hanuman, firm and true, Whose heart the law of scripture knew, Well trained to meet occasion, Trained in all by duty's law ordained, Strove with his prudent speech to find Soft access to the monarch's mind. He, skilled in every gentle art Of eloquence that wins the heart, So grieve from his trance to wake, his salutary counsel spake. The realm is one, the name advanced, the glory of thy house enhanced, and now thy foremost care should be to aid the friends who succour thee. He who is firm and faithful found to friendly ties in honour bound will see his name and fame increase and his blessed kingdom thrive in peace. White sway is his who truly boasts that friends and treasure, self and hosts, all blent in one harmonious whole, are subject to his firm control. To thou, whose footsteps never stray from the clear bounds of duty's way, assist as honour bids thee now thy friends observant of thy vow. For if all cares we lay not by, and to our friends' assistance fly, we after toil in idle haste, and all the late endeavour waste. Up, nor the promised help delay, until the hour have slipped away. Up, and with Rago's sun renew, the search for cedar lost to view. The hour is come, he hears the call, But not on thee reproaches fall. From him who labours to repress His eager spirit's restlessness. Long joined to thee in friendly ties, He made thy fame and fortune rise. In gentle gifts by none excelled, In splendid might unparalleled. Up to his succour, king, repay, the favour of that prosperous day, 
unto thy bravest captains send prompt mandates to assist thy friend the cry for help thou wilt not spawn although no grace demands return and wilt thou not thine aid afford to him who realm and life restored exert thy power and thou hast won the love of Dasarath's son and wilt thou for his summons wait until he call thee hesitate think not the hero needs thy power to save him in the desperate hour he with his arrows could subdue the gods and all the demon crew and only waits that he may see redeemed the promise made by thee for thee he risked his life and fought for thee that great deliverance wrought then let us dress through art and skies his lady wheresoever she lies through realms above beneath we flee and plant our footsteps on the sea then why o lord of banners still delay us waiting for thy will give thy commands o king and say what task has each and where the way before the myriad banners tend to sweep through heaven over seas and land so grip a heart the timely reed that rules him in the day of need and does to nila prompt and brave his hest the imperial banner gave go nila to the distant hosts that keep in arms their several posts and all the armies that protect their quarters with their chiefs collect to all the luminaries placed in intermediate regions haste and bid each captain rise and lead his squadrons to their king with speed do thou meanwhile with strictest care all that the time requires prepare the loitering banner who delays to gather here ere three five days shall surely die for his offence condemned for sinful negligence Canto thirty, Rama's lament. But Rama, in the autumn night, stood musing on the mountain height, while grief and love that scorn control shook with wild storms the hero's soul. Clear was the sky without a cloud, the glory of the moon to shroud, and bright with purest silver shone each hill the soft beams looked upon he knew sugriva's heart was bent on pleasure gay and negligent he thought on janak's child forlorn from his fond arms for ever torn he mourned occasion slipping by and faint with anguish heaved each sigh he sat where many a varied streak of rich ore marked the mountain peak he raised his eyes the sky to view to his love his sad thoughts flew he heard the sorrow's cry and faint with sorrow poured his love-born plaint she she who mocked the softest tone of wild birds voices with her own where strays she now my love who played so happy in our homage shade how can my absent love behold the bright trees with their flowers of gold and all their gleaming glory see what eyes that vainly look for me how is it what my darling when from the deep tangles of the glen float carols of each bird elate with rapture singing to his mate in vain my weary glances rove from lake to hill from stream to grove i find no rapture in the scene and languish for my fawn-eyed queen ah does strong love with wild unrest born of the autumn steer her breast and does the gentle lady pine till her bright eyes shall look in mine does ragu's son in piteous tone overwhelmed with sorrow made his moan 
even as the bird that drinks the rains to indra thousand eyed complains then lakshman who had wandered through to corpses where the berries grew returning to the cavern found his brother chief in sorrow drowned and pitying the woes that broke the spirit of the hero spoke why cast thy strength of soul away and weakly yield to passion's sway arise my brother do and dare ere action perish in despair recall the firmness of thy heart and nerve thee for a hero's part whose is the hand unscathed to seize the red flame quickened by the breeze where is the foe will dare to wrong or keep the mighty lady long then with pale lips that sorrow dried the son of Raghu thus replied lord indra thousand eyed has sent the sweet rain from the firmament sees the rich promise of the grain and turns him to his rest again the clouds with voices loud and deep veiling each tree upon the steep up on the thirsty earth have shed their precious burden and are fled now in king's hearts ambition glows they rush to battle with their foes but in sugriva's lot i see no care for deeds of chivalry see lakshman on each breezy height a thousand autumn blooms are bright see how the wings of wild swans gleam on every islet of the stream four months of flood and rain are past a hundred years they seem to last to me whom toil and trouble tried my cedar severed from my side she gentlest woman weak and young still to her lord unwearied clung still by the exile's side she stood in the wild ways of dundagood like a fond bird disconsolate if parted from her darling maid so griever lapped in soft repose untouched by pity for my woes scorns the poor exile dispossessed by Robin's mighty arm oppressed the wretch who comes to sue and pray from his lost kingdom far away hence falls on me the banner's scorn is sweeter friendless and forlorn the time is come with heedless eye he sees the hour of action fly unmindful now his hopes succeed of promise made in stress of need go seek him sunk in bliss and sloth forgetful of his royal oath and as mine envoy does upbraid the monarch for his help delayed vile is the wretch who will not pay the favour of an earlier day hope in the supplicant's breast awakes and then his plighted promise breaks noblest made of all women born who keeps the words his lips have sworn yea if those words be good or ill maintains his fate unbroken still the thankless who forget to aid the friend who helped them when they prayed dishonoured in their debt shall lie and dogs shall pass their corpses by sure thou wouldst see my strained arm hold my bow of battle backed with gold wouldst gaze upon its awful form like lightning flashing through the storm and hear the clanging bowstring loud as thunder from a laboring cloud his valor and his strength i know but pleasure sway now sinks them low with thee my brother for a lie that strength and valor i defy he promised when the rain should end the succour of his arm to lend these months are past he dares forget and lapped in pleasure slumbers yet no thought disturbs his careless breast for us impatient and distressed and while we sadly wait and pine 
got by the lords he quaffs the wine go brother go his palace seek and boldly to sugriva speak does give the listless king to know what waits him if my anger glow still open to the gloomy god lies the sand path that bali trod still to thy plighted word be true lest thou o king that part pursue i launched a shaft i pointed well and bali only bali fell but if from truth thou dare to stray both thee and thine this hand shall slay thus be the banner king at rest then add thyself what seems the best and of cantos twenty eight twenty nine and thirty